just make a selection. Now the difference is that I have only brushed very lightly. Make selection, right click. I've only brushed, can you see, I've only I've only used about that kind of opacity here. And uh, after that, if you choose a white colour maybe, you see, you start to brush in the white. Alternatively, once you have it done, deselect, there's always the trusty dodge and burn tool which also has the kind of side effect of giving you different colours. Obviously you have to select what you want to play with, but uh, you get the idea. You only want to keep this very light because at the end of the day you don't want to overdo it, you don't want to fill it in too much. So that's that. Now this next stage was made in a couple of ways. Uh, let's break this down. We have these kind of vector flames, which is just stock that I bought from Shutterstock. Uh, you can find it, just search vector flame packages. If you can't afford a stock account, I suggest uh, the Go Media website, which has a load of affordable kind of stock packages, and uh, you don't have to pay <laughs> uh, 100 or 200 quid a month or dollars, whatever you you pay in. Um, and the other technique here is you can see these thin streaks. This is a technique older than uh, Bruce Forsyth. If you don't know who Bruce Forsyth is, it means you're not from England basically older than dinosaurs and as you can see it's once again uh, using the path tool right click instead of making selection we're going to stroke it now before we stroke it the stroke is going to be completely dependent on how your brush is set up if for this it's best to select a hard brush and even even something such as the size and the spacing is going to affect how this comes out so if I use a really thin one there, switch back to my pen tool, right click, stroke path, and there we have it. And then if I right click and delete path, you'll see the stroke has been made. And you saw that the simulate pressure was there to kind of fade this off and on. After that, I just went, I did a layer style, out of glow, and obviously adjust to taste. This was all done on a separate layer but that's how these thin parts were made and like I said those parts were just vectors. Uh, now we're moving on to the adding of the stock imagery. Now like I said before the stock is really important and if you can't afford the stock account Stock Exchange is a great website. It's... I've actually... Cl no I have not. SXC if you're not familiar with this website basically search for a photo this is where I got my uh, reference photo also there it is and just download and just make sure that you do not use this in a commercial project or a project you will be making money from or you will get into trouble fortunately this is just for portfolio work so there will be no problems there but just keep that in mind and um, this is just another photograph. This is two photographs we've gone. I've put uh, this is a campfire, which I actually bought from Shutterstock, and the kind of main outline is a firework, and the firework is just set to the uh, as with all images with bright kind of on black. You want the bright parts to stick out. You want the black parts to disappear. If I brought this in normally you would see this, set to the screen mode and you will just retain the luminance information which is what you want. If you need to edit up further bring up the curves and you can kind of uh, just edit to taste. Okay that being said I've done that for the firework and the flame. As you can see this is really starting to look like the finished piece now and I also added uh, flare behind the head just to give it that overall brightness if you don't know how to make a flare make a new layer in fact I'll do this in the other in the other make a new layer fill it with black filter render lens flare and this is 
obviously the most overused <laughs> effect of all time. You see them everywhere. But if they're used right, they can be cool. And then you just bring this, like I said before, get rid of the block information. And you bring that to screen and then Control M, or Command M on the Mac. You just edit this. You can give it different looks. I think I use uh, the color dodge, color dodge on the other one, so that it burnt over this red background. Okay, so I think we're pretty much ready to finish this up now. As you can see I added some final elements. Um, the kind of smoke here is the obvious one. Once again, that was just bought from Stock Exchange. Uh, you can search for your stock on Stock Exchange. Uh, sorry, I bought this from Shutterstock. And, but you can search for yours from Stock Exchange, it doesn't really matter. And I've also added these, as you can see, these bubbles, which kind of just gives a vibrancy to the fire and believability. Also just makes it a lot more colourful. And uh, these were really easy to make. I mean, you've got your standard, standard glow spheres, which is as simple as making a new layer. And I could do a tutorial on brushes themselves, but these are just the basic brushes. Change it to scattering. I also had brush dynamics on, so that, and as you can see, there you have it. And then obviously, there's hundreds of options how far you want it to scatter, the, the jitter, and if you want it to kind of differ in color. Obviously, I don't have great color selected, but there you go. So that's how these little glow spheres were, and obviously I've done this on a few different layers, so you can have some faded out more than others to give that impression of depth. So yeah, that's just about it, and so ooh, it's been 15 minutes. Hopefully you've managed to stay with me up till now, but th that is pretty much how it was made. Obviously from here, this is not finished. If you compare the picture to the final one, then you just go into post. What I usually do is I save my file out just so that I don't um, make any edits by accident and then save over it, which I've done before and lost the whole file, which was obviously painful and <laughs> not what I'd recommend. So learn from experience, save your file out, and this is the most fun part. Once you save that, flatten the image, and then just go crazy with the adjustment layers. I'm going to play with the photo filter color balance, curves, all that good stuff. Okay, uh, it's been a long one. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learnt something. Thanks for watching and keep tuned for more tutorials hopefully soon. Bye.